Today we're going to be taking a quick look, a first look, if you will, at the Aya Neo Retro Mini PC. This is Aya Neo's first PC that they've put out as far as like a standalone little PC. These guys are known for doing handhelds. Uh, that's what I've seen. I've never used any of Aya Neo's products, but I've always heard a lot of good things uh, in the community f about these guys and the different products that they've put out. And they did send this to me for, you know, purpose of review, checking out, sharing with you guys, that kind of thing. And what I want to do is just this quick first look type of thing where I unbox it, test some stuff out, give you guys some of my first impressions. That's really what this is about. And then I'll be doing some follow-up content where I go through and test a ton of different games, see what this thing is really capable of. But these guys currently have the Retro Mini PC AM01, that's what it's called, uh, up on Indiegogo. And you guys know me, whenever I talk about crowdfunding campaign, I always have to give like uh, a little, you know, word of, of caution. Um, these guys have done tons of campaigns and have been successful, but always when it comes to crowdfunding, have to give that warning back at your own risk. Um, I'm not being paid by these guys or anything, and I'm not a big fan of crowdfunding, but some companies have proven themselves, and that's fine. So if you're comfortable, yeah, back at your own risk. But this is currently available now on uh, Indiegogo. They have a bunch of different versions as far as different processors, bare bones, uh, RAM setups, different storage options, but you have like bare bones systems, uh, Ryzen 3 all the way up to Ryzen 7 systems with different pricing and whatnot, depending on, you know, the setup that you want, different RAM, uh, storage, that kind of thing. But I, I really do, I really dig the look of this device. I love mini PCs for a few different reasons. One is it's mini. It's kind of out of the way. It's like a little console. And two, the other thing that I really like about these is using them not the way I would normally use my desktop. I use my desktop PC for tons of different things, work, email, watching YouTube, uh, you know, playing some games here and there. But with a mini PC, what I like to do is set up like an emulation console, use coin ops or uh, LaunchBox. And that's what, you know, any footage that I show of gameplay here today is going to be through LaunchBox and coin ops. Uh, and that's just one thing I really dig with this kind of stuff. A lot of people like to have a little tiny PC that's capable enough beyond like a little tiny single board computer that can emulate tons of different consoles and play some PC gaming. And that's what I like to, you know, have with the mini PC. And and this one, it really looks the part. It's customizable. They gave you a bunch of stickers you could put on this thing. I'm not a big fan of stickers, but you got the option. There's some little magnetic pieces that you could swap around. Uh, that just, just kind of, you know, change the look of the thing. But as far as input outputs, you have a bunch of USB ports. There is one USB-C port on the front, so I'm glad we have at least one. Uh, then you have HDMI, one HDMI, and then a display port on the back. So you have a few options, input outputs, not too much to complain about, but, you know, it should be enough to use all your different accessories and whatnot. I had a, you know, keyboard, mouse, and controller and a hard drive external hard drive plugged in no problem still had plenty of ports left uh, to be able to use but the one that i have here today that we're taking a look at is the uh, amd ryzen 5 5700 u uh, processor version with the 8 gigabytes of ram and 256 gigabyte ssd so not going to be a powerhouse necessarily but there's going to be a lot you could do with this one do your research if you don't care about the looks of the device if you just want a mini pc uh, it's very competitive out there but i do think these prices seem fair as far as what they're giving you here uh, not just the aesthetics the case looks really cool plays that part of being a mini console uh, but you also do get when i first booted this up they have that i what is it called aya space which i didn't have a controller plugged in when i first uh, booted the system up and it's a pain in the butt to navigate through all that using a keyboard and mouse. Uh, it's really meant for, I believe, their handhelds. As I said, I've never used an Aya Neo device before. Always heard good things, but um, when I first booted it up, it did go into that Aya Space thing, which is like a game library uh, launcher where it kind of you know has all your games that you can add to it to just all be in one place. 
Uh, and then you also have a ton of different options as far as uh, power, things like that, customizations to the system. If you plug in a controller, definitely easier to navigate through all that. Uh, but you may want to just go to the desktop and you know launch coin ops or launch box, that kind of thing. That's what I did here. Uh, but as far as going back to the package here, uh, that it everything that it came with, you know, power supply, HDMI, the basic stuff, but it also came with a, a hard drive bracket that they put real gamers, no gamers, like they etched Aya Neo in there. So they, they kind of went all out with their branding and, and etching things and, and doing all that kind of stuff. A uh, very neat little package here. But like I said, I, I'm going to do a follow-up video where I test quite a bit more as far as games go, uh, PC gaming and emulation. But today I just wanted to, you know, first impressions, first look. I did open this thing to see how easy it would be to expand the storage or to swap components. They do give you the screwdrivers and the little uh, spudgy pick things, whatever the heck they're called, to pry it open, uh, to just kind of undo the clips that are underneath. Uh, nice that they give you all that, but once you get in, it's not the most user-friendly. I mean, it's not complicated at all, uh, but you don't have immediate access to everything from just taking that bottom piece off, and that's the only part that like, comes off to give you access. I didn't see any way to take the top off. Uh, so you take the bottom off the four screws, and then there's that big ass fan that's in there that keeps this thing cool. But in order to remove the board or get any more access, you do have to remove the fan, it looks like, because there was uh, three screws on the motherboard to pull it out of the case. But there's a fourth screw that's underneath the fan that you can't get access to unless you remove the fan. And then they, they did that thing where they put a sticker that has a screw underneath it for the fan, uh, saying that if you remove it, you void your warranty, which is kind of ridiculous, you know, as far as repairability and stuff like that goes. Like, I don't think those stickers mean anything, but uh, that was as far as I took it, just opening up the bottom. Looks very clean on the inside. Now, as far as some of the games I played, I, I emulated Wii U, Sega Saturn, GameCube, a few things like that with no issues. Uh, this is a, a lower end processor, but it's still a decent processor. It's only eight gigs of RAM. You're a little limited, but we'll find out more uh, in a very near future video where I have the time to test quite a bit more. Uh, this was just to take a quick look at it. I like what I'm seeing here. Very neat. Let me know what you guys think. If you are interested, I'll put the link to the Indiegogo down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.